Hello YouTube, welcome back campaigners. This is Campaign Terrain, I'm your host Cross. And this week, i got a simple build for you. I have a lot of dice. I've got boxes of dice, I've got bags of dice, i got more bags of dice, i got dice. We all have dice. Everyone is special and near and dear to my heart. So, not only do I not want to hurt them when I roll them on the table, I don't want to hurt the table either. So this week, oops, I'm going to show you how to make an indestructible, flexible dice tray that not only will you not ever break it, it won't scratch up your surface. It won't rip any of your character sheets, any of that. So, simple materials, simple tools, let's jump right into it. Thanks for coming. There's going to be a jump here in a minute. During the bump, make sure to hit like, share, subscribe, hit those other links that are up there. They can help out the channel and I would really appreciate it. See you in just a minute. Thanks for coming. Some folks wonder why you even want a dice tray, but I love my dice, you love yours. We have character sheets, we have terrain pieces, we have food and drink, other things we don't want knocked over. So today we're gonna make a simple tray to keep everything safe on the table. We're going to start with the basic 10 millimeter foam, give or take. That's the floor mat, the type that you'd use in a shop. And all I'm doing here is cutting it down to size so that I can fit it on my table easier without that long straight edge being necessary. Now I'm cutting mine along center lines. I tend to keep things symmetrical, but you don't have to. Each of these pieces is going to be cut into smaller slices in just a moment. I had already decided on an inch and a half for these strips that I'm about to cut, but luckily my ruler happened to be exactly the right width. You can cut these to any size you want. This will be the height of the outside of your tray. So I'm just going to use the ruler here, lay it down as a straight edge, and cut that inch and a half strip. And then I'm going to repeat this three more times. These are going to be the outside strips. Now I haven't cut them to the direct length yet. We'll get to that in just a moment. You can make the sides of your box the size of your tray any size that you want. I was thinking of making this into a tower as well as a tray so that I can use it as both a piece in the game and simply as the dice tray as needed. So I needed to fit with my other tiles. Now they're all in increments of three so I was going to have a six inch by six inch and I realized that was going to be too small so what I'm doing here is cutting a nine inch strip and that's going to be the outside edge. You're going to need four of these at whatever length you cut. Mine happen to be nine inches but you can make yours at whatever size you want. Again, cut four of these. Here I've decided to keep the textured portion on the inside so that I have a smooth surface on the outside. So I'm going to keep that facing inward. Here I am scoring all four of these along this speed square at 45 degrees so that they're tapered with the texture on the inside. I'm just marking each of the four ends. Then here I'm going to take an individual one and cut it the rest of the way through. I'm going to continue this for all four pieces. I want to keep a 45 degree cut tapered inward, making sure my texture is on the right side. Now that I've got all four cut, I'm using a hot glue gun to join the corners. I tend to use mine on low temp, but a high temp will work here. Just be careful when you're doing this. Anything that you get that's bleed out, you're going to want to rub off, and with high temp you need to be careful of that. Here I am joining one corner, and then I'm going to switch and join all four into a square. Here I'm measuring the inner span of my square. You'll see me measure it twice. It's the whole measure twice, cut once idiom. Your inner span is going to differ based on how large you make your tray and on the thickness of the foam used. So just carefully measure this out and we're going to need that measurement in a moment when we cut the bottom. Here I'm just using a pen to mark out all four corners of the square. 
I'm using a framer square to do this. You can use whatever you want, but you do want to make sure that it is going to fit inside the tray. This is going to be the bottom and it's going to nestle in between the four sides. Now that I've got all four corners cut, I'm going to go ahead and simply slice along the straight edge so I get a nice clean edge on that cut. Once you've cut the square out, the pieces that are left over, you can use for the inner portions of your wall if you'd like, or you can set those aside for a later project. I'm going to use a different thickness than this, so this is just going to be the bottom for me. Now that I've got the bottom cut, I've opted to take the heat treated harder side and use that as the upper surface because whether I paint that or cover that with another foam, that's going to leave the harder surface on the inside, which is going to keep it more protected from the sharp corners of dice, especially the D4. Also, it's going to leave the bottom softer so that it'll have less chance of scratching up a table or anything like that. Attaching is really simple. You just put the glue on one side, attach that side, and continue around until all four sides are done. I'm going to show you here so you can see that it's going to fit right on in there. Now that the bottom's in place, I'm going to take another small strip here, measure it against the side on the inside edge, and use a knife to mark off how high that's going to be. Now I'm not going to go ahead and cut this here because that's going to give it a crooked line. I'm just going to mark a couple of points, then I'm going to use a straight edge to cut that off so that I have a gauge for how wide to make the inner pieces. Here I'm taking my gauge and I'm using it to mark first one end of the strip and then I'm going to turn around and use it to mark the other end of the strip. I'm not actually going to cut along it. I'm just using it as a marker. And then I'm going to use the straight edge to complete the cut. These next four strips need to be the same length as the inner width of the box minus the thickness of the foam you're using. This foam can be a different thickness than the outside wall or it can be the same. Here I'm using two pieces of the same thickness but you don't have to. These pieces need to be the width minus that thickness of the foam. These do not have to be tapered like the outside. The reason for that is it provides more support once they're glued in but the line remains hidden. You'll see what I mean in an upcoming segment. This next portion is pretty straightforward. You go ahead and put the glue on the side that you want to have hidden and you, then you place it against one of the sides. You're also going to want to apply glue to the bottom of the tray so that when you put the piece in the side adheres to the bottom so you get a good bond all the way around. You're going to want to push that over to one side. Make sure you leave that gap at one end for the second piece to go in place. For this next portion, I've opted for some of this 5mm thick craft foam. You can get this at most hobby stores. You can use whatever you want to line the bottom, or you don't have to line it at all. Especially if you're going to hit this with a spray paint or something that's going to have pretty good coverage if you have anything printed like that that you want covered. Here I'm just showing that this comes in a 9 by 12 sheet, so this is already the 9 inches I need for the width. And I'm just double and triple checking that. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut a square to match the outside dimension of my box. In this case, 9 inches by 9 inches. In this portion, I'm measuring the width of my outer wall. Yours is going to vary based on the thickness of the foams you use. Mine happens to be 7 eighths of an inch, but your mileage may vary. Now that I've got all four of the sides measured out, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And it's going to turn out like a big square donut. I'm going to be able to sit it right on top. There's going to be a square piece that drops out of that. I happen to be going to use that as the cover for the inside 
bottom of my tray but you don't have to use that you can use anything you want or leave it off entirely I will be showing you another option in just a few moments I had been going to use a thinner piece of foam that I had textured in a previous video and I was going to use that in the bottom of my box but I decided that since I already had the square cut out I was simply going to use the same five millimeter piece if you didn't do that you can use the piece that you cut out to find the correct size for whatever you use to line your box with or you can simply paint your box leave it online however you want to do it now if you use something thin like that other piece that I textured you are going to want to go ahead and put a bunch of glue in the bottom to hold it down. Now the five millimeter piece I'm using is rigid enough and flat enough. I don't need to do that for this build. And here's a little bit of proof of concept. See me making a couple of rolls here. They roll great in this, and I'm really happy with the results. So there you go, campaigners. Easy way to keep your dice safe. Keep them where you need them. Don't let them roll all over the table. Don't let them hit anything hard and mess with your dice. Won't let your dice hit anything and hurt anything. Won't let anything get scratched up. And a whole project maybe a half hour if you're not filming it simple and easy this is a basic simple one next week I'm gonna add some parts to this to make it look more like a tower and like it could be used either as a dice tray or as part of a dice tower so the tower I build next week will look playable but will also be able to roll dice through it so stay tuned for that the week after that is my one year anniversary and I am so looking forward to that that's what I got coming up. After that, I've got a huge build, still with the EVA, so I hope I'm not boring you, but the next one, you could build it out of anything. I just happen to be using the EVA because I really, really like it, and I've been enjoying this series. So, big build, like three or four parts coming up after that. So I've got the next couple of months planned out for you, and I hope to be bringing you some really cool stuff that's really going to inspire you to make some stuff for your game. All this stuff's really simple. All this stuff's really straightforward. You can do this. I know you can. And I'd like to help you get inspired to up your own game. So, with that, time to game. Let's get rolling. And I will see you next week. Once again, this is Campaign Terrain. I'm your host, Cross. Please hit the, bu the buttons for like, share, and subscribe, and help out the channel. I'll see you next week. And until then, I wish you luck in your campaign. Thank you so much for coming.